because he represents the disciplic succession. So it is called, it is not called birthday, but it is called Vyasa Puja, right? Vyasa Puja, because the spiritual master is the representative of Vyasa Day. And when we perform this ceremony, we're not just honoring one person, but we're honoring first of the disciplic succession. All of the Acharyas, we're offering our respects, we're offering our gratitude to all of them on this occasion. We say the spiritual master is one, but he comes in many different forms. We can see in our disciplic succession, the spiritual master comes in many different forms. But the message of this spiritual master is one. All the members, all the representatives of the disciplic succession will deliver the same message according to their realizations. So that this knowledge given to us we could say by Srila Vyasadeva, because Srila Vyasadeva is a compiler of the Vedic literature. Particularly, he compiled Srimad Bhagavatam. So, the spiritual master is representing Vyasadeva. He is delivering the message as presented by Srila Vyasadeva in the Vedic literature. The spiritual master is the representative of Krishna, as well as being the representative of Vyasadeva, he's also the representative of Lord Krishna, in the sense that whatever is offered to the spiritual master is not for him, but it is for him to give to his spiritual master. Srila Prabhupada gave us the example, he said, just like in the times when India was ruled by the British. So at that time, the representative of India, and he would receive different presentations, different valuable jewels and so on, would be given to the representative of the British government. And he would take these things, and he would bring them back to England, and present them to the Queen of England. So in the same way, whatever we offer to the spiritual master, it is not for the spiritual master, but it is for him to give to his spiritual master. And, and in this way it goes through the disciplic succession and ultimately it's all given to Krishna. So this is important for us to remember. Prabhupada explains that the spiritual master is like a postman. The postman's duty is to deliver the mail. He does not add anything and he does not take anything away. He simply delivers the mail. If the postman has been looking at your mail and putting something in or taking something out, then you've got a problem. And the same is true with the spiritual master that if he adds something or takes something away, then it's also going to affect our Krishna consciousness. That's a serious problem. So the, the duty of the spiritual master is to pass on that message of Krishna as he has received it, just as the postman delivers the mail. Uh, One, one time, uh, one young man, uh, one young devotee uh, took sannyas and after he took sannyas, then he was preaching in, in India and he, he was worried because everywhere, you know, people were respecting him. He was carrying the danda, the rod of the sannyasi, the rod of the renounced order of life and everywhere he went, People were bowing to him and respecting him. So he came back to Srila Prabhupada and he said to Srila Prabhupada, he said, I don't like this. He said, wherever I go, people are giving me so much respect. But Srila Prabhupada told him, he said, they're not, they're not respecting you, but they're respecting what you represent. 
So in the same way, the Vyasa Puja is performed, it's not for the honor of that person, but it's for what the spiritual master represents. The spiritual master has to carry on the tradition. And on behalf of his spiritual master, then he accepts people into Krishna consciousness and, he, and there tries his best to connect them to the disciplic succession and to the process of Krishna consciousness. Another time, Srila Prabhupada was in the temple, this was in New York, and uh, one, the mother of one devotee came and she was watching the devotees offer Guru Puja to Prabhupada and she saw all the devotees line up and offer flowers to Prabhupada. And so afterwards she had an opportunity to meet Srila Prabhupada and she said to Prabhupada, she said that your devotee, your disciples worship you. And Prabhupada said, yes, and I also worship my spiritual master. So this is a, another point that the spiritual master is not God, but he's the representative of his spiritual master. And whatever we do for our spiritual master, he does for his spiritual master. It's a, the, the system of disciplic succession. So the, the, the spiritual master's duty is to deliver the knowledge of Krishna consciousness as he has heard it from his spiritual teachers and through the line of disciplic succession. Then there's a, a good effect, just like we, we initiate devotees into the chanting of Hare Krishna. So the chanting of Hare Krishna is a mantra and sometimes people say, oh you don't need initiation, anybody can chant. And actually it is stated in Chaitanya Charitamrita that no initiation is required you just, in the chanting of Hare Krishna, you just need to chant. But it's also stated, Sampradaya vihina ye mantraste nishvala mata that if you receive the mantra without going through the disciplic succession, then it won't have any fruit. It's not going to give any fruit. We have to understand that, that initiation is not just only chanting Hare Krishna, but there's much more which comes along with the chanting of Hare Krishna. There's a whole teaching of scriptures like Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam there is also the process of deity worship. There are many different principles involved in devotional service. It is not just simply chanting Hare Krishna, but one has to understand the process of chanting and why we are chanting and what should be our mood in chanting, what are the uh, rules to be, what are the different offenses in chanting. There are many things to be understood and for all of this, that's why the, there's, there has to be some teacher. But spiritual master is not one. We have many spiritual masters. Just like we explained that uh, in addition to the initiating guru, there is also the shiksha gurus. We have many different senior Vaishnavas coming here and giving classes. And you should see all of them like your spiritual master. You can see all of them as your shiksha gurus, that they're coming to give knowledge, to give their association, and you have an opportunity to inquire from them. So there's no difference between the diksha and shiksha guru. The, the qualification is the same. Now someone may have even more faith in the shiksha guru than in the diksha guru. It's not a problem. Some people may have more faith in Prabhupada. In fact, you should. We're in, we encourage all the devotees to have the ultimate faith in Srila Prabhupada and his teachings. And we accept a, a spiritual teacher because this is one of the items of devotional service. Rupa Goswami, in his uh, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, which is 
recorded in Prabhupada's Nectar of Devotion, describes the different items of devotional service. And it, he describes, Ado Guru Padashraya. The first thing is to accept the shelter of a spiritual master. And then he goes on and explains that after accepting the shelter of a spiritual master, then you render some service to the spiritual master. Now that service could be many different things. Particularly, the spiritual master wants some devotees to help him in his service to his guru. That is it, the duty of the disciple, to help the spiritual master in his service to his guru. That is why a spiritual master will accept disciples, that they can assist him to serve his guru. He doesn't need someone to cook for him. He doesn't need somebody to clean for him. He doesn't need somebody to do his laundry. It's not very important. What is required, we need people to help serve. Krishna conscious mission, the Srila Prabhupada's mission, particularly by preaching and that distributing books, taking part in the different programs, maintaining our temples, and sometimes even building temples. This is all required. This is uh, giving service to the spiritual master. So, uh, then Rupa Goswami goes on to say that in, after serving, then also one should uh, take initiation. One should accept initiation. It is one of the items of devotional service. So the, we, we, we see uh, Lord Krishna also had a spiritual master. Lord Krishna doesn't need a spiritual master, but just to teach us. By his example, he went to the ashram of Sandipani Muni. And we see also Krishna at the time of his birth, Gargamuni came and Gargamuni gave name. You could say Krishna had two gurus, Gargamuni and Sandipani Muni were both gurus for Krishna. Lord Chaitanya took initiation from Ishwara Puri. Later on also he took sannyas from Keshava Bharati. So, different people, the, but they're all like guru, like spiritual teacher. So, guru is not one. The guru comes in many forms. And we should take advantage of all the different senior Vaishnavas who come to go and hear from them and to inquire from them. So, before we take initiation, we first of all take uh, instruction. First of all, we accept some people, we, we, we see people as our shiksha gurus. We hear from them, we take instruction from them. Then from the different people who are giving instruction, then one person will become more prominent. So then we take initiation from that person. But first we take instruction, and then later on, then you take initiation. And after taking initiation, then you continue, you continue to take instruction. We still have to hear. We still have shiksha gurus, even after taking initiation. It's not that once I take diksha, oh, he's my guru. No, we still have, we have many gurus. This is the nature, the unique feature of ISKCON, that we have many spiritual masters. So it's a very safe situation that we have many people there helping us. We can reach out to them for help, for guidance, to take instructions. So we ask all of you to understand these principles. Okay, so any question? <coughs> he has two gurus. Two, uh, two uh, Diksha Gurus, right? Keshav Bhakti and Ishwara Puri? Well, not Diksha Guru. He took the initiation from Ishwara Puri. But the, the Sanyas <coughs> Guru was... that He took Kesha, Kesha Bhakti was the Sanyas Guru. So Sanyas Guru is not usually worshipped. But you have to take someone, somebody has to give you Sanyas, 
Somebody who gives you sannyas has to be a sannyasi. You can't sit, you cannot take sannyas from a, somebody who's not a sannyasi. But we can take initiation from anyone. But we have to know the qualification. The qualification is that they know the science of Krishna. They may be grihasta, they may be vanaprastha, they may be brahmachari, they may be sannyasis. But they must know the science of Krishna and they must be initiated, they must have a guru. They must also be coming in the line of the cyclic succession. Right? They must be qualified. If someone said, no, I'm myself, I'm myself, I'm a guru, I realized everything by my own, then that's not good. You know, they have to have had a guru, somebody must have trained them, they have to be connected to the disciplic succession. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took the initiation one time, he got the initiation from Ishwara Puri, but then later on he, you know, he, he took in sannyas from uh, Keshava Bharati. We saw, we said, sometimes uh, people say, well, we're, we're having an, another guru, maybe somebody's already initiated, then they come to Krishna consciousness. So, uh, we encourage them to again, take initiation because generally other people who are initiated but not initiated in any bona fide sampradaya within any line of disciplic succession. So we encourage them that they should also take initiation in the in the in the parampara. In Balak Sampradaya they have this concept of giving Brahma Samana. That giving what? Brahma Samman, that is the initiation. Oh, okay. So that is also a disciplic succession, so that is considered to be uh, the right form of uh, bona fide? Yeah, yes, uh, the Balava Sampradaya that's coming from, uh, 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 he's coming in uh, the line from Lord Shiva, Correct. Vishnu Swami. Correct. Yeah, Pushti Marga. Yeah. Pushti Marga. Yeah. yeah. But, we have to appreciate the unique contribution of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That, that while the, the other disciplic successions are there, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took the main elements from, from each of the four sampradayas and brought them together in one line. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took uh, two elements from the two prominent elements from each of the four sampradayas and brought them into his Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya. And the Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya comes from Madhva. Madhva means from Lord Brahma. So this is Brahma, Madhva, Gaudiya Sampradaya, Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya. So even someone may be initiated in some other line, Prabhupada would, I saw Prabhupada initiate them again because he considered that the Gaudiya Vaishnava line was supreme over all the other sampradayas. But for the, for the sake of pre, for the preaching, in terms of preaching, in terms of uh, philosophy, in every respect, he considered the teachings of Lord Chaitanya to be the highest. So people who, even if they'd been initiated in some other line, if they were very serious in Krishna consciousness and Prabhupada encouraged them, Take initiation. Okay, any other question? Okay. Okay, so Hare Krishna, 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 